So what exactly is a seed in Flux and how can we use the seed values to make changes and tweaks to our images? Well, I'm going to show you now because it's actually really simple. So I'm just in um, replicate.com at the moment, just using the Flux dev model. And I'm going to paste in just a different prompt that I've used previously as an example, just to give us something different to look at. Aspect ratio, it doesn't really matter for this example. I'm just going to change that. I'll just leave it as one output. Um, and I'll just click run. So we're just running the first image at the moment. So what the seed number is, is every image that's generated, like in this case, if you go down to the logs at the bottom here, where it's got all this information, it will give you the seed number. So it says using seed 40386. So if you want to do some sort of iterative changes, as I call them on an image, you want to go and paste that seed number or make a note of it somewhere else, just in case you lose it off the screen. Obviously, I've got my exact same prompt there. So what would happen now is if I ran this prompt again without changing anything, it would give me a different image. Let me just do it just to prove the point. So it's given us a seed number, but I haven't entered that seed number in anywhere. So it's given us a variation on the theme uh, based on our prompt. And if we go to the log here, you can see it's given us a different seed number again. But if we wanted to make changes or go back to the original image that we liked, a particular version, we can just go with the original seed number, which was 40386, and we can paste it into our seed section here. And as long as the prompt remains exactly the same, we're going to get the same result as we had previously. So I'm sure you can remember that is exactly the same as the first result we ran a minute ago. Now, even if there's one tiny change in the prompt, a full stop missing, an uppercase letter instead of a lowercase, it will make the image a bit different. But now we've got this locked in. So we've got a prompt and we've got our seed that's going to give us this repeatable results every time. This is a way that when we find an image variant that we like, we can now have more of a stable way of adjusting the prompt and trying different changes. So now we've got it locked into that seed. So it's always going to start with the same baseline data that would generate this image. And now it's going to be the differences are going to be influenced by changes in the prompt rather than random changes to the seed. So maybe we can go into the prompt and we want to see um, glass of maybe we want to change the drink, a glass of orange juice. But because we've got the seed locked in place, the overall positioning and the general look of the image should stay the same. Now, it's not going to change just the drink and leave everything identically. That's not how it works. It will regenerate everything again, but it's going to keep it more consistent than if you'd have just let it run random seeds every time because it would then maybe change the position of the cat completely, put the drink on the other side and all these kind of things. So as you notice, the cat does look different. It's not in an exact same position, but overall the image is a lot more is a lot more coherent. So now we'd say, well, let's change something else. The glass of orange juice. Let's say the cat is eating. Just change. <clears throat> Cat is eating a plate of fish and again run that and we've got the seed locked in kind of get the impression now so we can use the seed to keep the overall image the same uh, or the overall look the same and just tweak elements of the image now you can do things like adjust not just the content of the image itself like we've changed the milk to orange juice we've changed the cereal to a plate of fish but then you can also do things just like change the style of the image so or the parameters so if we keep that prompt exactly the same and um, I'm going to just click this to download it so I can show you a before and after so we can also use it to see what effects the different settings has on exactly the same image so if we go down here to things like the guidance number and the number of steps and things like that that you may not know exactly what they do now we've got it locked in with a seed the changes will be very obvious. So let's just say, for example, we wonder what happens if we push the guidance number up quite high. Now, I know that the higher that will go, the more kind of cartoony and sort of illustrative and oversaturated it will be. But we can we can look at that effect directly because we've got the seed fixed. So if I run that now, and we're hopefully going to see 
something that looks a bit more cartoony, a lot more processed. If I put these side by side, which I will do in a second, you'll see this one almost has a bit of an HDR look to it. And um, whereas on the other hand, if I take this very low and run that again, we're going to see something that probably has a lot more of a realistic photography look. There you go. So less saturated colours and everything's almost identical in terms of positioning and everything. And this is a really good way to see the difference between the settings. So this is how I personally like to use seeds. I will find an image that I really like or a layout or composition of an image that I really like. I'll lock it in with a seed and then I'll go maybe changing the guidance number. The number of steps is it potentially can add more detail and quality if you go higher, but it will also um, add more cost to the um, job. So 28 to 50. I was fine between 28 and 35 is always a good a good spot for general use. 